Hello friends, we will start today's session with a short clip which I am sure you will enjoy watching. As you watch it, try and relate it to today's topic which is optimal use of materials and resources. So, what you saw in the clip is pretty much what we are going to discuss and think about today which is not t-shirt hacks but how to use resources creatively, how to transform and adapt that which is easily available so that it becomes interesting and useful both. So in today's session we will discuss common classroom resources and materials, innovative classroom resources and materials, the benefit and advantages of using a range of materials, adapting and grading materials, varying the nature of student assignments by varying materials and looking at the multiple uses of one possible teaching material which is infographics. So let me start by asking you, what are the materials or the resources that you use in your classroom? Let's look at this slide to see if these are the common teaching materials that you use, a course book or a textbook or reference books. And if your classroom is ICT enabled, then PowerPoint presentations. Now reflect on the usefulness, the significance, the appropriateness and the relevance of these materials. Think of other possibilities in terms of materials that you can bring into or incorporate in your teaching. So in other words, Beyond this existing range of materials, are there other possibilities that you can consider for your teaching? Let's look at this slide. So we can use journals, papers, reports, essays, newspaper clippings, surveys, graphs, smart board. Or we can use excerpts from films or interviews or speeches and documentaries. Now uh, what could be the benefit of using a range of materials rather than just one or two resources and especially if there is already a course book that has been prescribed? Well, a range of materials has its own benefits. A. It adds variety and therefore makes teaching a more interesting phenomenon. It presents multiple perspectives, analyses and evaluation or observations on the concerned topic. It caters to a variety of learners and different predispositions students may have to learning. It is enabling, in that sense it is empowering and it contributes to innovative pedagogy. Now in this light, I'd like you to think of a particular topic you teach and make a list of all possible resources, the new ones that is, which you can use to deliver that topic. This is of course an assignment which you can think over or you can deliberate on later. Besides varying and alternating the range of teaching materials, you will obviously need to adapt materials too. So what is adapting materials? Adapting is when you choose some resource or material as a probable teaching aid and modify it or improvise it to suit your teaching requirements. Let's watch a short clip. 
as you watch this clip, please make a note of how the task is accomplished and if there are any hindrances or roadblocks that could have deterred the person from accomplishing the task, what are they? That was Esther. That was Rajesh. <laughs> so the task was to scale the wall and reach the top. Initially, it was the expertise of the climber that helped her climb up to a certain height. She anticipated the expected crevices and fissures in the wall and progressed with the help of those till she got stuck at one point. Which means that somewhere the wall fell short of her expectations. Which is when she had to use her resource and her expertise to make the wall scalable. That is exactly what we need to do as teachers. With the regular course book, we might be on familiar terrain, but there will always be a point, a bend, a turn, when the course book will be insufficient. It will need to be supplemented and demand our expertise. That is when we need to bring in alternative resources and approaches to make the climb easier for us and more importantly for our students. Now, if you reflect on what you just did, you will realize that what you engaged in as participants of this particular course was also an instance of material adaptation. You will say, how? So, my purpose in this session is to deal with the subject of optimal utilization of resources, right? Now, rather than explaining through language and repetitive examples alone, what did I do? I chose to show a video. In other words, in addition to the lecture method, I used an alternative resource, a video. What did I use the video for? The video was used as a metaphor for using materials. The wall and the act of climbing stand for the teaching and delivering of a concept. The crevices stand for familiar and well-tested approaches which makes the climbing, that is the journey, easy. The additional resources which come out of the climber's pocket and the climber's rotating move stands for an unconventional twist or change or move in the materials. It certainly worked and the climb turned out to be a success. So where did I get this video from? It was a WhatsApp forward which was turned into a teaching material. This is what I mean by optimizing the use of available resources. We all get forwards and posts on Facebook and WhatsApp and we all spend varying amounts of time watching the videos and reading the messages. The least we can do is, if we could, 
while engaging with social media, keep this somewhere in the back of our minds that the message, post, picture, example or video might become a teaching resource. Then that could be the starting point of bringing variety inside our classrooms and breaking the monotony of our sessions which might make teaching easier, delivering or conveying concepts easier and more fun. And in fact, this is just one of the many, many resources that we can introduce in our classroom. I just mentioned WhatsApp because we invest so much time in it. How do we go about planning or choosing our resources? The key thing is that when we deal with a topic, the first thing which we need to consider or think about is what is the purpose of this topic in the syllabus? How does this topic fulfill the curricular needs? Or in other words, how is it aligned to the objectives in the curriculum? What is or what are the key concepts I am looking at delivering or conveying through this topic? And finally, how do I do this? The responses to these four questions should determine my choice of teaching material. A topic can sometimes be an open field of exploration too. In fact, topics under certain fields and of certain streams need to be dealt with and treated as an open field, left for students to deliberate on, to dwell on and mull over. Just like varying and adapting teaching resources, assignments given to learners can be varied too. For instance, students can be given assignments to revise key concepts. They can be asked to represent key concepts graphically or pictorially. If they are events, they can be plotted on a timeline. Progress or growth can be presented through a flowchart, etc. So sometimes the assignment can be as simple as representing or expressing the key concept acquired through a relevant and corresponding say infographic. This will enable the teacher to check understanding and also reinforce the concept dealt with. A film, a, not an entire film maybe, but a film clip, a documentary, an excerpt from an essay, a report, an advertisement, a song, all of these can be shown or played to serve as a metaphor for a key concept. The idea and the intent is to capitalize on what is readily available and be creative with the use of resources at disposal. The materials should not only aim at delivering and reinforcing and simplifying the key concepts but also offer scope for practice, discussion and reflection on the student's part. Material that is too complex and heavy will need the teacher's intervention to modify it into something that is more simple and comprehensible and at the learner's level. On the other hand, Material that is too simple must be made more challenging. This is called grading material. Sometimes the same input can be made more or less challenging depending on what is being covered and the desired learning outcome. For example, let's have a look at this infographic. A range of activities can be conducted around infographics. So what are infographics basically? Uh, basically they are meant to make complex concepts simpler, present information in a more comprehensive manner. Infographics can be used in a variety of ways. Students can be asked to decode the information, give their opinion, students can be put into groups. Each group can be allotted particular sections of the infographic and come up with a relevant case study of the same or they can come up with analogies and examples of the concepts in the infographic. Groups can also be given the infographic as a model and asked to create a similar infographic on another area. 
this will also teach them how to use or how to present information through infographics groups could be asked to explain the logic behind color coding if an infographic shows color coding so in this way a single infographic can be used in multiple ways to attain diverse learning objectives the idea is to make learning experience or the entire experience of learning as student centered as possible to facilitate pair and group work to give scope for discussion to enable students to open up to articulate to express and to finally through that to enable a free classroom environment similarly incorporating talks say that are already available on youtube or you have these ted talks or ideas from ted lessons and google classrooms creating assignments around relevant apps using film clips or interviews to initiate discussions draw parallels could be other ways of optimizing available resources the idea is to expose students to a multiplicity of ideas through a multiplicity of resources that are already available and that will enrich and enhance the experience of learning